welcome to our Wednesday day with Angelina Kasha. That's me. And today I'm with a Dr. Bourmain. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay, cool, because I've been practicing for the past 20 minutes how to say his last name. <laughs> welcome, Doctor, and thank you very much for taking your time to come and talk to us, because everybody that is looking and uh, watching, I'm sorry. You do local anesthesia, am I correct? Yes. That's awesome, because I always interview Dr. Fabian, that is the other doctor in my cosmetic surgery that does local anesthesia, and I'm very glad that there's somebody else that I could ask tons of other questions. What procedures do you do with local anesthesia? With local anesthesia, we can perform procedures uh, from head to toe. Basically, we can do a, a brown leaf, we can do... A, a brown leaf? Yes. We can do also uh, a lower and upper lip blepharoplasty. Uh -huh. We can perform a uh, face lift and neck lift. Um, on the area of the face, we can perform uh, a liposuction of the uh, chin. Of the chin. Uh, and also... Are you looking at me and telling me all the things that I need to do? Is that what you're doing? Uh, basically, I'm just trying to explain to <laughs> our patients what are the options that we have with the local anesthesia. Because that's all I want to do on my face, all of okay. that that you just said. Okay, I mean, you just need an evaluation and go ahead. We... How about from here down? Okay, and then when we go down, we can perform a liposuction. Uh, liposuction of the trunk, liposuction of the abdomen. Uh, and all of those areas where we can uh, harvest in the fat, we can perform uh, a fat transfer. We can perform a fat transfer as a BVO mm -hmm. that is highly demanded. And also uh, we can perform uh, another surgery with a local anesthesia, such as a, a resection a skin lesion. What is that? Section, when you have a, a basal cell uh, lesion, which is a most of the time it's due to uh, the sun, okay, uh, that yeah. kind of thing that happened. We can also perform uh, removal of soft tissue such as lipoma. Uh, mm. I mean, we a couple of times during our time here, we are doing those procedures too. In general, uh, we can do many things with the benefit of the local anesthesia. What is the benefit uh, of the, the local anesthesia? The benefit is your recovery is really fast. You're gonna go right away, next day you can perform most of the thing that uh, is necessary to, to continue living in America. Um, in general, that's probably the most important benefit. Your recovery is fast, uh, you're gonna be every time uh, talking with us during the surgery. We sometimes... So uh, you are completely awake, like we could have a conversation while you are doing a lipo, is that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. Huh. Yeah. You, did, you said lipo? But how about tummy tucks? Yeah, uh, related with the tummy tuck, uh, we are able to perform with local anesthesia a mini tummy tuck. What it means that is when you go below your uh, belly, uh, everything that is below your uh, belly bottom is what we used to call as a mini tummy tuck. Which is not the extent that it goes all the way back, it's the one that is from here to here. Exactly. Okay. And uh, uh, there is another uh, kind of indication to perform that surgery. Uh, it is most of the time when you, the laxity of your skin is not so bad as the time when you have a, a big uh, pregnancy mm -hmm. with a lot of vegetables and then you need to remove all the things above even the belly bottom and we can do those procedures uh, only with local anesthesia. Okay. The recovery is good and we are able to do it and we are going to continue doing evaluation for patients who need that procedure too. Quick question, we did not mention breast, no breast with local. Yeah, uh, we are, most of the time, the big uh, surgery of the, of the breast. Uh, I mean, so such as uh, plays, uh, new implants, uh, that kind of things is not good to perform with a local anesthesia. So we're not doing breast with local, basically. But we can do at least a breast leaf. There okay. is certain case where, uh, based on our evaluation, mm -hmm. we would decide to perform a breast leave with local anesthesia. Question, doctor. If somebody wants to come and do a surgery, because you know, as a patient, we do not have the knowledge to say, I'm going to do this, but we come with an idea. I like Dr. Bermain, I want him to be my doctor, but you cannot do the procedure because it takes a general anesthesia. 
what do you do? You tell the patient you need another doctor? Is that yes, absolutely. Whenever we have a patient that after our evaluation we consider is not a good candidate to uh, get the surgery with local anesthesia, is our recommendation you need to get an evaluation because you said you need a general anesthesia. A general anesthesia. Doctor, I'm stuck on the face, I'm sorry, because you said a lot of surgeries that I want to do on my face. Okay. I always thought that my eyes were very low and I didn't know that a brow lift existed. Like, it's a very hard, can I go to work like right away after? Like, how do you do that? That's you, so interesting. Yeah, you're going to uh, got a kind, I mean, you're gonna be swelling uh, at least uh, in the initial days, uh, the initial week, probably the, the first two weeks a kind of more uh, difficult to get completely back to okay. your regular performance. But uh, the recovery is good. You are gonna this the this the scar gonna be hidden uh, like where? In, in inside of you you hair. Inside of my inside hair. Your, I mean the surgery will not be visible at all. That is so cool. Yeah. So I don't have to draw my eyebrows like that anymore. Now I can just do it with surgery. It's kind of a little bit easier. That is so, what is it? Cause I'm always saying that I need a shin lift, um, lipo. What is the, a good age to start doing facial surgeries as you need it? Or there is like an age, like you say 45, 50, you should start taking care of doing lifts and stuff when? Uh, the aging process, uh, start, I mean, getting, uh, uh, I mean, kind of, uh, you have more, you need surgery most of the time after 40 years old. Okay. And that's a kind of general. But every single patient could be absolutely different. Different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the time when you are below 45 years old, you just need a, uh, a chin like absorption. But above that age, most probably you will need a face. A lot of work. Because your skin, uh, gonna have the elasticity. Uh, the elasticity, not the elasticity. What happens is when you perform the liposuction on your chin and you're older than 45 years old, your skin won't be bad. And the then same. the laxity of the skin gonna be hanging, and that's the reason why you most probably uh, not only gonna need it, the liposuction on your chin, you will also need it, a resection of that skin, getting a little bit tired in order to look pretty, look better. If somebody does a, a lipo mm -hmm. and gets pregnant, do you recommend to do another lipo or try to lose that weight? Like, how does uh, it work? The sequence, uh, the sequence is completely uh, different. If you uh, get uh, pregnant and you are completely done with that, it's a good time to get a surgery after that. Okay. But it's not in the same way when you uh, already has had a, uh, a surgery, a liposuction, your body will change when you're gonna get pregnant. Yeah. You are going to increase your weight, the, the skin gonna change. And most probably after a liposuction, you got pregnant, what happened is that the surgery may not be noticeable. Yeah, uh, after after this the pregnancy because you just ruined it basically. Exactly, so that's the point. If, if let's say somebody that is looking at us and wants to do a lipo because she got fat after a pregnancy and she couldn't lose the weight, which it happens to a lot of women. Um, how long can, do they have to wait? Uh, in general, is my consideration that every single patient is completely different. Number one, and number two. Most of the time, you should wait at least six months. The healing process, uh, the recovery, take that kind of time. For your body and your or organs you, to go exactly. back and your body to go back. Because a lot of people don't understand that it's not just, yes, the baby is out and we want to go back to life, but our bodies are still not back to the original Absolutely. form. Absolutely. I've learned that from coming over here because yes. I've never really knew that it takes that long. Yeah, I mean, the something that the, the nature uh, absolutely yeah. knows better than us. That, that everybody, point. right? Um, the point is that the healing process takes every single time more than six months. Yeah. The good, good, good time is a year after. Mm. But then you can get an evaluation six months, how you look. If you lose weight, or probably you're gonna need to lose more weight, that's, that's gonna be the time that you will decide what is the best. Do you do. recommend to, look, to lose weight before you do lipo or after you do the lipo? No, whatever you're going to, 
to go, if, whenever you think that you're going to go to a surgery, uh, the best that you can do it is lose the weight that you needed before the surgery. Hmm. Yeah, so you could be skinnier. One. Absolutely. That's yeah. number one. Because what happened is that even based on the fact that okay, you have certain amount of fat and you and we remove it and then you lose more weight, your skin gonna be hanging. Again. Yeah, yeah. And that's the time that you should go to your kind of BMI, the one that you should keep it the one that you expect to have it. Yeah. And then after that, evaluation, surgery, things are good. good. One last question, doctors. I know you have patients waiting for you. It's okay. Let's talk about BBLs. When people come and they want a bigger backside, they always focus on the backside. They never realize that you have to do a lipo to get that. They're like, no, I just want my butt to be big. You need a lipo in order for your butt to be big, right? Yeah. So yeah. many people just focus on the end result. But with a BBL, what do you recommend the recovery to be? I know that you cannot sit down for a whole month, lay down for a whole month. Mm -hmm. So for somebody, for example, that works in the office, what can they do if they do a BBL? How do they take care of that butt for it not to go away? Uh, related with the BVR, uh, you need to avoid place pressure mm -hmm. on your in the area that you uh, have the BVR done. What do you mean by that? that you cannot have a seat. At least there is different recommendation. From my standpoint, six weeks, eight weeks is a good time. Mm -hmm. um, even you have uh, uh, the chance to avoid use tight. Uh, to wear uh, tight jeans, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, because even that plays a lot of pressure on your uh, on your back backside, of, on, yeah. your butts, uh, on your backside. And whenever you are placing more pressure, you are compromising the blood supply of the area where you uh, place fat, and that fat needs a good blood supply. I mean, to succeed. And um, that's the reason why... So circulation, is see, circulation, exactly. that's what I'm taking from what you're telling me. Exactly. Circulation, so I could put it in my own words so they could mm -hmm. understand. Circulation is important for those fat cells that we just put there not to die. Absolutely. So you need to wear loose clothes until we are 100% sure that those fat cells got stuck to you. Mm -hmm. That's how it works, right? That's the point. Ha, huh, interesting. Last one, last one. Not told you that was the last one, but this I promise is the last okay. one. So, Females, we go through diets, we take a bunch of supplements, we always inventando. What do you recommend for us to do? Because I know that we have to be super, super clean in order to come to do surgeries. Should we get on a diet or take any supplements before surgery? And if not, when do I stop it? Um, it's a little bit difficult to explain uh, to the patient that if they are going to go to surgery, they need to stop uh, multivitamins, uh, supplements. But the reason is most of them, uh, I mean, compromise uh, the proper coagulation process. Mm -hmm. That is really, really important. Vitamins, vitamin C. I mean, almost all of them go on that way. Like uh, your coagulation could be compromised, and that's not a good uh, fact for the surgery. And the other thing is that uh, most of the time, uh, the use of medication uh, to sleep uh, and such, such as, for example, the, I mean the benzodiazepines, those yeah. medication, they have uh, the problem that the metabolism is on the liver, and we with local anesthesia. I need to have your liver absolutely clean. healthy, clean, because that's where the lidocaine is going to is going to go and, and clean then, it out and clean it up. And if you are taking those medication, uh, the metabolism could be delayed, yeah. and you can have I mean certain difficulties uh, in your recovery and even with the local. So all your liver enzymes and everything has exactly. to be a hundred percent clean. Absolutely. No up, no nothing. It has you have absolutely. to have a clean liver because with general anesthesia. You use your whole body, but with local anesthesia, your liver is very important. And all those um, supplements that you guys are taking, uh, the liver has to clean it. So if the liver has to keep working on what you are taking, and then the anesthesia, makes total sense. 
Absolutely. It makes total sense. Doctor, thank you very much. And for you guys that are looking into doing any surgeries, please call 305-264-9636. This is Dr. Bermain. Give him a call. Make your appointment or just walk into my cosmetic surgeries. Thank you for being here. Share this video with anybody that is looking into doing a surgery, thinking about it, and leave your comments below.